Part one. You are going to listen to a conversation between two friends who are discussing the organization of a party. As you listen, answer the questions. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully, and answer questions one to five. Hi, Matt. Right on time. Have you been waiting long? Hmm, five minutes. The buses were held up on the high street. Otherwise, I would have been early. Yeah, there's something wrong with them today. Yes, I think so. Okay, what should we do? Should we go and have a coffee? Yeah, that would be nice. There's that place on the corner over there. It does really nice coffee and cakes and things. And at this time, it's usually very quiet, so we'll be able to talk. Okay, let's go there then. So, when's the party going to be? Well, it has to be at the end of September before we all leave for university. We've plenty of time then. We don't go for another five weeks, do we? Hmm. Well, we haven't really got that much time, if you think about it. There are only a couple of weeks at the beginning of September when all of us are around. Oh yes, I forgot. Nazrin, Phil, and Nikki, and all that lot have gone off on holiday. And I'm away for two weeks from tomorrow. So, what does that leave us then? As far as I know, we're all here between the nineteenth and the thirtieth of September. Will Sandra be around then? I know that she has a whole string of family birthdays at that time, and she might not be available.、Hmm. Well, let's make a note of that, and we can contact her about it. Okay. Shall we settle for the twenty-first of September then? What day is the twenty-first? It's a Saturday. Is that okay? That's fine. Before the conversation continues, look at questions six to ten. As you listen to the second part of the conversation, answer questions six to ten. For these questions, there are three alternatives: A, B, and C. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the correct letter. And now for the tricky bit: where are we going to hold it? Well. I spoke to Nikki last week, and she volunteered her place, as they have a huge house and garden. Oh, fantastic! Will her parents be around? Yeah, I think so, but she said they won't mind. Oh, right. Well, my parents wouldn't like it at all. <laughs> Nor mine. <laughs> but is it definite? Yes. When I spoke to her, she said it was definitely on. I'll just have to confirm the dates with her. We thought it would be one weekend in September, so I'll just have to make sure that that one is okay. One thing Nikki suggested: we could have a daytime party, as we could be outside if the weather is fine. Oh wow! How far out does she live? It's not that far. Do you know where West Road crosses the bridge? Yeah. It's the first house on the right, with that huge drive up to the front door. Oh right! I know exactly where it is. The road is off the A33 and runs north, then over the bridge and first on the right. I know it. Ah,、oh, the place is amazing. You know it has a big swimming pool. Does everyone know where she lives? Most of her friends do, but not all. 
But it doesn't matter, as we can put this map Nicky sent me in with the invitation. How shall we do the invitation? We can do it on the computer. I can scan the map, and we'll put it all onto an A4 page. Is this the address? Can I just write the address down? It's 93 West Road, and I'll take the phone number. It's 477130. Right. There's one other thing. Yes? We're all giving £10 towards refreshments and food. There'll probably be a barbecue. Do you think that's enough? Oh, right. Yeah, that's fine. And everyone will have to help tidy up afterwards, including the boys. <laughs> That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk about Runwill, a charity that raises money by organising running races. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 17. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to tell you something about the Run Well charity and the work we do. I'll give a brief overview of what we do and I hope you may be able to help and then there'll be time for questions at the end. Runwell's founder, Mike Hughes, took up long-distance running in 1987, raising money by doing sponsored half-marathons, and in 1992 established the charity as we know it today. By 1997, the runs were being filmed by local TV, and today they appear on national TV every year. All the funds collected by Runwell go to the hospital with the idea that those fit enough to run use their energy to assist the provision of people who are unwell for whatever reason. Now, if you want to race, and I assume that's why many of you are here, let me explain a couple of the basics. Races are run by teams, so you need to form and register a team. What you wear to run in is up to you, and I know some teams come up with some pretty wacky ideas. We have a standard design for your numbers, which we ask you to reproduce. So you make them up according to that standard. We don't want to spend valuable funds on doing that ourselves. Now, the race is run as a kind of relay, so while you won't actually compete side by side, we do recommend that you train as a group. This helps to optimise performance and build team spirit. It will also give you a fair idea of how much you need to eat and drink over the race distance. This is clearly essential for an effective performance, so please make sure you come along to the race with sufficient food and drink. Again, we don't spend money on providing that, but you do need to keep yourself going for the 20 kilometre course. The course goes through the town, then out through Highfield Park, concluding in the main square, where the applauding spectators will be ready to greet you. There are many different prizes, including oldest runner, youngest runner, team with the most sponsorship, team with the best costume.
That one's donated by Zoom Fashions. The mayor will introduce the Minister for Health, who will hand over each prize to the winners, and then the hospital president will make a short speech. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. OK, that's the big race. But I know there are many people who don't feel they are up to running a 20-kilometre race, but who would nevertheless like to raise money for Run Well. Over the years, we've had experience of many ways of trying to collect money, some very successful, others less so. Now, of course, 20 kilometres is too far for children to run. But there was a sponsored swimming event at the local school last year, and that did very well. People have also tried to organise food-based events, such as selling homemade cakes and bread and so on at the market. And there was a large picnic arranged in four bright gardens, although these events failed to justify the efforts put into them though I'm sure they were very tasty. These days, so many people are out at work all day that going from house to house to collect money isn't very effective. But it is possible to raise useful funds by selling small promotional items, such as badges with the Run Well motif on them. We're currently checking to see if postcards, perhaps showing the race's winners each year, might also be a good idea or not. We do appreciate the efforts that have gone into selling second-hand goods, but to be honest, the returns have not been very high on this. One very dedicated group organised a team quiz recently, which went very well, and it would be good to see more such activities. There's also been talk of a concert, but we'll have to see how plans for that progress. Now, are there any questions at this stage? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation about plans for a university sports centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Before we go on to look at specific sports, let's think for a moment about the non-sports facilities we really need here. Uh, things like better changing rooms and showers. Yes. If this really is going to be a state-of-the-art building, it'll need to have high-tech amenities, but mm. also places for people to chill out after all the exercise they've been doing. Somewhere they can meet up for a drink or whatever afterwards is essential in a place like this. But what else? Hmm. How about a sauna? Those who use them say it's the perfect way to relax after you've trained. The trouble is, though, that there's a debate going on about how safe they are. Some say it's risky to be exposed to all that heat before or after strenuous exercise, which, of course, is exactly when people in sports centres want to use them. There have also been problems with people overusing them to sweat off weight. So, to avoid any possible dangers, I don't think I'd include them on my list. 
talking of dangers, I wonder whether we ought to have some sort of facility where minor injuries like cuts and bruises and sprains can be treated. Maybe. It would seem to make sense with all the mishaps that are bound to occur when you have so many people running and jumping about and so on. Ah, hold on though. Isn't the new medical centre going to be built right opposite? Yes, it is. It should be finished by the end of next year. <laughs> then there's no point, is there? Anyone who gets hurt can go over there, where there'll be much better treatment than anything mm. we could offer on site. Yes, I can see that. What we should provide, though, is a facility with full-time physiotherapists, for everybody on the campus, that is. As well as treating people, they could work on prevention of things like muscle tears and strains. Right. And something else the new place ought to have, also as a way of preventing injuries, is somewhere to test just how fit people are before they start lifting weights or running long distances and so on. Yes, I was going to suggest that. When I was at the Newport Centre, they put me on a static bike to check out my cardiovascular system. Ah. Then they worked out how much body fat I had. All of it valuable information telling you exactly what shape you're in. Another thing I've heard some universities do, especially some of the newer ones, is provide rooms and equipment for lectures to take place actually inside their sports centres. How do you feel about that? Well, as it happens, I've got first-hand experience of that too. We used to have some of our sports science lectures right next to the main sports hall, and I think it made what we were hearing about seem much more relevant to the real world. So, in that respect, I definitely think it's a good idea, yes. Mm, I can see that, though my own feeling is that we need to have more concrete reasons. Mm. The problem is that we won't have unlimited space, and somehow I don't think providing more lecture halls is going to be one of our priorities. So, I'd be against that one, I'm afraid. Anything else? Hmm. Well, just that I agree about the need to have a place where people can go for a chat and maybe have a coffee or a bite to eat together. That was something I always thought was one of the strong points of the centre in London. It was a great place to find out about new activities from the people who actually did them. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. So what about the main sports facilities themselves? What do we need? Well, we don't need a rugby pitch because there's already one on the campus. Um, the same's true of table tennis, really. Hmm. Most of the halls of residence for students have their own tables, so there's no point in using precious space here for any more. Agreed. Uh, something none of them have, though, is any sort of pool. A lot of students have complained about this, saying they have to take a bus downtown if they want to go for a swim. Yes, that's definitely one for this place. Perhaps a jacuzzi too. That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would. Perhaps next to the squash courts, just down there to the right. They are very popular, by the way. I think we should have a couple more here, don't you? Absolutely. And another sport that's been growing in popularity is volleyball, especially since we did so well at the last Olympics. Uh, don't you mean basketball? <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. Anyway, the point is that there is a court in the old gym next to the Students' Union building, but it always seems to be fully booked up, even though it's not very good. And there's nowhere else on campus to play. OK, let's have one of those too. How much space have we got left, by the way? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation between two students. They are talking about the English bars. As you listen, complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Kevin, could you tell me something about the bars? I have never been to a bar. You see, Steve, my classmate, has invited me to go to a bar tonight. I see. You know, the word bar means a room in a pub. We say the bar when we mean the part of that room where drinks are kept. Soon after you go into the pub. You'll realize that nobody comes to the tables to take orders or money. Instead, customers go to the bar to buy their drinks. I see. People will go to the bar directly to get their drinks and don't wait for someone to come to take their orders. That's right. People don't queue at the bar, but they do wait till it's their turn. Oh, how do I pay? I mean, do I pay directly after I get the drink? Or do I have to wait till I'm ready to leave, like I do in a restaurant? It's not the custom to pay for all your drinks when you're ready to leave. Instead, you pay at the bar each time you get drinks. It helps if you're ready to pay as soon as you're served, and you'll notice that many people wait with their money in their hands. I see. Do I have to give a tip? No. It's not the custom to give a tip. It's very common for friends to buy their drinks together in round. This means that each person takes a turn to buy drinks for everybody in the group. It's faster and easier, both for you and for the person serving, if drinks are bought in this way. Naturally, you don't have to have a drink in each round if you don't want one. That's interesting. When you're looking for somewhere to sit, remember that people have to leave their seats to get drinks, etc. So an empty seat may not, in fact, be available to you. If you're not sure whether a seat is free, ask someone sitting near it. When it's time for another drink, people usually take their glasses back to the bar to be filled again. If you're leaving, the friendly thing to do is to take your glasses back to the bar, thank the person who's been serving you, and say goodbye or good night. Thank you, Kevin. This helps me a lot. By the way, what kinds of drinks are available in pubs? Well, you can get both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Beside alcoholic drinks such as beer and wine, there is cider, which is made from apples, usually sold in bottles. Port, a type of thick sweet wine from Portugal, sherry, which is a type of wine from Spain, and spirits. These are a kind of strong alcoholic drinks, such as whiskey and brandy. What about non-alcoholic? I don't drink alcohol. Well, they offer all kinds of fruit juices, such as orange and tomato. These drinks are usually sold in small bottles, and soft drinks we often call sweet drinks, like Coke and Fanta. They are normally sold in small bottles or cans. And lemonade, which is a clear and sweet drink made with carbonated water, they also serve cordials. What are cordials? Cordials are strong and sweet drinks tasting of fruit, such as lime cordial, black currant cordial. They are often added to other drinks or drunk with water. I don't like sweet drinks. Are there any other non-alcoholic drinks? Yes, mineral water, but it's not available in all pubs. Kevin. One more question: What is VAT? I saw this on most goods in Britain. Well, VAT stands for Value Added Tax. 
The price shown on most goods in Britain includes a tax of 15%. If you use the retail export scheme, this tax can be returned to you if you take the goods with you when you leave Britain. You may have to spend a certain sum of money before you qualify for the scheme, and you'll have to show your passport. Ask in the shop if they operate the retail export scheme. If they do, the shop assistant will explain how you can get the tax back and fill in a form with you. VAT is also charged on hotel, restaurant bills, theater, cinema tickets, and car hire. Are these refundable? No. It's not refundable in these cases. Thank you very much. I really learned a lot. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank、you